super excited to be here with y'all and talking about how you can grow despite having fears um, in work and in business. And it's really important to have this conversation for those of you who are either career focused or also focused on entrepreneurship. We need to have that conversation because handling fear in both of those spaces is a little bit different. And so we're going to be talking about that tonight. I'm super excited about that. So y'all can be active in the comments. This is an open conversation. I look forward to um, engaging with y'all tonight. In addition, um, getting into my presentation. So let me, without any further ado, play my theme music and then we'll get into this. So welcome, welcome to my live stream. I'm super excited to be having this conversation with y'all about how we can grow at work and in business despite fear. It's a super important conversation to have. Let me drop in the chats the visuals for tonight because if you get a chance to uh, check this out later, if you're catching the replay, I want you to be able to have an opportunity to go through these slides on your own. And if you have to drop out early from the live stream, I want you to be able to have these resources. But goodness, this is a big topic an important one when you're talking about how to grow at work and in business despite fear and I'm actually you know in purposefully as an entrepreneur dressing down for this experience I threw on a t-shirt got my earrings on because I really wanted y'all to understand that you can be your authentic self uh, despite whatever you're fearing about work the work that you're either doing in a career or the work that you're doing in entrepreneurship. And if you are an entrepreneur and also being your authentic self in business, and a lot of times that's the first fear that people have. And so I wanted to just dissect that and um, completely demolish the idea that you cannot be your authentic self when you are running a business. So I show up in these streets every single week live for y'all on Wednesday at 8 p.m. being my authentic self to showcase and demonstrate to y'all what it looks like to be in an actionable safe space as an entrepreneur. And sometimes I'm dressed up a little bit um, and other times I'm just being my authentic self and just kind of dressed down a little bit. Um, either way, I'm showing up with my full uh, authentic self and showing different parts of me. And that's an opportunity that we have as entrepreneurs because we're not relegated to some code of, of how we're supposed to address based upon a company culture. But even when you're dealing with company culture, there's a way for you to be authentic. And we're going to be talking about that tonight. So let's get into these slides because I want y'all to have the, the full opportunity to experience this. Um, uh, this experience uh, with me. So let's have this conversation. First, let me welcome you to my live stream. This is where creatives, visionaries, innovators, coaches, and entrepreneurs, those of you I call authentically distinct folks, people like you and me, we come together and we focus on being our authentic selves for greater joy and impact for ourselves, but also those we touch with our unique gifts, talents, and abilities. That's the kind of people that I, I work with. And so that's who usually who chimes in and has a part of the conversation on these live streams. But today we're going to be talking about how how you can get into an actionable safe space so you can grow when you experience fear in work and in business and i'm super excited to have this conversation because just people are not talking about this the right way but let me introduce myself i'm ebony l green of authentic distinction that's where i activate authentically distinct and neurodistinct folks so that they can develop deeper connections and impact in their life career and business without compromising their authenticity their desires and their values because they don't need that to get to where they're going with that big vision they've got and i do this because most visionaries are confused in and by their greatness and this is why they struggle to get their big ideas and visions out of their heads and their hearts and into the real world and that is not what i want for authentically distinct and neurodistinct people so i teach them how to create what i call an actionable safe space and i guide them to get clear confident and resilient in their authentic ingenuity innovation and impact so that they can have access to more creativity, consistency, and cash. And that's why I'm unapologetically known as the Ratchet Sage, because I'm not playing with your greatness and I refuse to see you ashy in these streets. Working with me, you will know what makes you a unique 
rare solution. That's what I call it. And you will know how to leverage that distinction so that you can get vision, your vision out of your head and into the real world so that you can stand out, shine and slay as only you can. And when we're talking about what we're talking about tonight, let's get right into it. I know you heard it all before. There's no space for mishandled fear in work and business, but nobody is out here breaking down the how of it all. And that's what I'm going to do for y'all today. This is part three of my Managing Fear series for this month on uh, my live streams. And this is all about work and business. How do you manage fear and work and business? And we've been talking about for the last few weeks how you can leverage curiosity to do that because according to the framework that I use to support myself, every single day in dealing with fear I leverage curiosity to do that because it's the one thing I can control it's the one thing I power on over no matter what is happening in my life no matter what the external is imposing upon me I can always be curious and leverage the power of curiosity and you can too so when you think about how fear is wreaking havoc in your work or business and how how do you leverage curiosity to manage right now that's what we're gonna be talking about today and I think the biggest thing is understanding what fear fear does to each of these you, your work and business so let's get into work first when you're talking about your fear and work your fear will impact your ability to shine this is what fear does to your work um, it's either going to help you shine more or it's going to take away your capacity to shine and when we're talking about shining you shine in who you be first and then you shine in what you do and a lot of times you'll find that I'm shining in who I be, but I'm not necessarily shining in what I'm doing at work or in my work, even if you're an entrepreneur. And at the end of the day, that is because fear is having a negative impact on your shine and you don't want that. That's ashy. What you want is to be using fear by leveraging curiosity so that you can get to a place where you are shining in your being and you're doing at work. So I'm going to give you my three steps so that you can overcome your work fears. What are these steps? You For one, step one, you want to localize your fears. And then two, you want to diagnose the outcomes of your fears. And then three, you want to choose to act on one fear. This is if you want to have authentic shine in your being and your doing at work, despite naturally occurring fear. For the last few weeks on my live stream, I've been talking to y'all about how fear is naturally occurring. This is not something you're going to get rid of in your life. It shows up. <laughs> it does what it does. And it's up to you to decide how you want to respond to that fear. And what I've found <clears throat> for me and personally and also for my clients is that when you understand that fear is naturally occurring, it's going to show up and that it is a manifestation of what you're going to feel when you're missing information on something that's important to you. So all you got to do is be curious and go out there and find that information. And so when you're talking about work, there's a lot of things that you're going to be missing information about in terms of your job. Um, sometimes that's imposed on the work atmosphere itself. It's just not set up for people to understand what's going on and to understand the place that they play within it. That's unfortunate, but that does happen at many companies. But even if that's not what it is, sometimes it's just difficult to understand what you're, the part you're supposed to be playing on a day-to-day -day basis so that you can be successful and productive within your role. Um, it might be because it's a new role or you have new leadership or new goals and you're trying to figure out what that looks like for yourself. All of these are times when you would want to follow these three steps. Um, Any time when you're just missing information on how you can shine in your being and doing as someone who is trying to lead uh, innovatively in their career. So let me model for you how you can use curiosity to complete these three steps so that you can overcome your work fears. I want you to be able to create an actionable safe space, as I call it, so that you can harness authentic shine in your being and your doing when you're experiencing work fears. That's what this is all about. So what I recommend is getting curious when you're localizing your fears first. Like, how is this fear affecting your ability to shine in your being at work? A lot of times you'll realize that I am afraid of showing my whole self. Um, I've been told in the past that I'm too much. I say too much. So you have an, a fear of being yourself at work. And that will affect your ability to shine in your being at work. People won't get a chance to really see what makes you special and what makes you distinct and why having you around to do what you do is so important that you're not replaceable to them, right? This is what you want. 
And this is how this fear can affect your ability to shine in, in your being at work. It's just one example. But you also want to be thinking about how is this fear affecting my ability to shine in my doing at work? Oh my goodness. That is a huge part of this, right? How is this affecting my ability to do? Because a lot of times we're not afraid of shining and being who we are. We're afraid of shining and doing what we think is going to be the best thing for us to do. We're so focused on, oh my goodness, I think I would much, much rather um, do things the way that other people are doing it instead of doing things in this innovative way that I'm thinking would actually make things better for everyone involved. So these are all things that I think is really, really important for us to um, be mindful of and to think about when we are focusing on um, what's going on at work and what we might be afraid of. This is how you localize your fears. When you know whether or not I'm afraid of being or whether or not I'm afraid of doing, you'll know how to kind of go to the next step, which is to diagnose the outcomes of those fears. If I don't really be who I really want to be, what could really happen? Um, if I don't really do what could I really am capable of doing, what could really happen? When you really think about what is actually going on at work, um, sometimes you'll realize that there's a hunger for innovation. There's a hunger for a new perspective or taking things things in a new direction and maybe the approach is not to blurt it all out in front of everyone in, in a, a meeting but maybe it's to approach your superior or approach the person who's leading that project or who's responsible for that innovation and to say hey I have this idea I just wanted to share this with you these are things that you can do when you start to diagnose what would be the outcomes of your fears what could happen if you use those fears to keep you in in action or make you react and just kind of do what everyone else is doing instead of kind of coming up with what your insides and what your truth inside is saying to do so that you can shine <clears throat> authentically distinct and neurodistinct people are here to bring a new perspective and lens that is going to change things for the better and if you are not diagnosing what could be the outcomes of either going along with that fear or being curious about what could really be done about that. Uh, you won't get to a sense of understanding what that fear is trying to tell you. What does it all mean? Then you'll be able to move on to how can I act on this fear, right? You're gonna realize that I've got a bunch of fears regarding my job and regarding my work, but what I really like to do is to, um, I need to mute something on my phone because it's just going crazy. Um, but I think that um, it's really, really super important to think about which is the one fear that I really want to tackle. I mean, when you're talking about the fears that you have with, with regard to your job or with regard to your career, there could be so many of them. But when you're trying to focus on doing something about it, you really want to focus on what is the priority right now. So asking yourself questions like, what when I diagnosed the outcomes of my fears, I found out like what was really going on and what it all means. But what is it telling me about what really needs my attention right now? And how can I apply what I've learned to assess the priority in all of this, right? And, and then you can apply all that you've learned to what you now know. And that will tell you what the priority is for you to focus on. A lot of times we'll be able to see like, okay, I'm really concerned that I'm not being seen at work. Uh, maybe I'm not shining in my being and I'm also not shining in my doing and I'd really like to be seen at work so that I can be promoted or so that I could be put on projects that would be a little bit more interesting for me. These are things that are difficult to do if you are not focusing on what would be the priority for me to actually fix this, right? And so why are you not shining in your being? Why are you not shining in your doing? Is it because you're not using your voice? Is it because you're not sharing your thoughts and your ideas? Is it because you're co-signing ideas that you don't necessarily agree with because you're afraid to share an alternate perspective or an alternate approach? These are all things that you really want to be tackling and that will give you a sense of like, what is the one fear I want to focus on and how can that change things for me? What can I do to change? What is your capacity and capability to make a change about that one fear? And at some point you'll have a sense of what you can focus on, but it's curiosity. It's answering all of these questions that's going to get you to an answer on what I actually need to do so that I'm not sitting here feeling this fear and it's just happening to me and each day I go to work and there's no change. Instead, 
right? You can take a hold of this power of your curiosity and start asking yourself questions that allow you to localize your fears, diagnose the outcomes of your fears so that you can prioritize which fear you actually want to act on. And that will allow you to get to a sense of what can I change? What can I do to change? What, what can I change about my being, my doing so that I can start to shine more? That's what's key. But when you're talking about fear and what it does to you in business, if you're an entrepreneur, it affects your ability to slay. I mean, there's work in business. There's the work side of business. So let's be clear, entrepreneurs have work to do. So they want to shine as well. So that all that I just said actually applies to entrepreneurs as well. But entrepreneurs also have this responsibility to slay. They have to slay by leading in their life. They have to lead in their business. And they also have to lead in their brand. This is super, super important. And so the three steps for overcoming business fears are a little bit different. And I wanted to make sure that y'all were aware of that. You want to Make sure you're clarifying the impact of your fears on leading your life so that you can um, then assess the impact of those fears on leading your brands. That will allow you to get clear on how you can counteract the impact of your fears on leading your business. So if you want to have authentic leadership so that you can slay or reign in your life, your brand, or your business, despite naturally occurring fear like we talked about earlier, you're going to want to learn my three steps overcoming business fears. First, let me model for you how you can use often uh, how you can use curiosity, authentic curiosity to complete these three steps to overcoming business fears. I want you to be able to create an actionable safe space so that you can harness authentic leadership when you're experiencing business fears. So the first step that I take again is to clarify the impact that you know these fears are uh, are having in me leading my life. So I'm trying to figure out what the effect is to fears on my being and my doing. So I want you to do the same. What's the effect of your fears on your being and your doing? And when did this disruption start? Like having a really clear understanding of that and what was going on at that time. See, when you understand when you started to be disrupted by your fears in business, in terms of you being able to lead your life, there are times in business as an entrepreneur where you recognize I'm afraid of something and it's really impacting my ability to lead my life. So a lot of times this happens when you have money concerns, cash flow concerns in business, or when uh, you feel like you've actually taken on too much. Uh, that also, I've seen that happen well personally in my own entrepreneurship and also with clients. When you take on too much or even when you you don't have enough. You can be in this situation where you are affected in your being and your doing and you cannot lead your life the way that you know you want to as a human being that is deciding to be an entrepreneur. And this is when that disruption starts. Um, and when you realize when the disruption started and what was going on at the time, you'll be able to realize what is triggering this fear. Um, and what you can do about it. Um, and you can figure out who is involved in triggering this disruption um, so that you can do something about them as well. And this will help you figure out how this disruption is stopping you from leading your life. The when, what, where, who, and how of it all is super important because this is gonna get you to understanding what can I do about this, right? When you understand what the impact is to how you lead your life, you'll have a sense of exactly what you need to fix and put, and put some hands on. Then you can move on to the second step, which is to assess the impact to leading your brands. When you're talking about how, how do I lead my brands, you want to figure out how this disruption is stopping you from leading your personal brand. You have a personal brand. I have one. It's the Ratchet Sage. And there are things that the Ratchet Sage needs to do in order for my brand architecture to be okay. And that personal brand is the foundation. I learned that from the Ghetto Country Brandmother. Y'all could check her out anywhere in these streets at GC Brandmother. She is amazing as a brand strategist. But I learned that my personal brand is my the foundation of my brand architecture and I need to lead that and when I'm experiencing fear that gets disrupted and so understanding how that gets disrupted and what is going on with that asking those when what where how who and how questions are super important for the personal brand then I want to dive deep into how is this disruption stopping me from leading my personal learning um well leading my personal my business brand and my business brand is authentic distinction but you have a business brand as well. So how is this disruption stopping you from leading your business brand? Because that is how you can assess the impact that is uh, that this fear is having to uh, on your uh, leading your business brand. So we're talking about the times when you realize 
I might be, so for your personal brand, I, for instance, right now, am afraid of how, what is it going to be like when I launch this book? I've been writing this book for the last few months. It's going to be my first real manuscript. You're not talking about an ebook or just a workbook that I'm putting out there. It's just going to be an actual book. And I'm super excited to get it out. It's the first thing I've ever encountered and, and, and tried to uh, do in the world like this. And, and I'm super excited. I'm super supported with the right people in my corner to get this done. Uh, shout out to Mystique Steel uh, Publishing who's helping me with uh, getting this done. Um, but what one of the things that I'm learning about that entire process is that I'm super afraid of what is that going to do for my life? Like that kind of publicity, that kind of exposure from having a book. I'm not really sure how that's going to impact how I'm able to lead my life. I'm usually pretty closeted and a very private person in my life um, while being ex ex super open and chatty and uh, uh, networky uh, when it comes to my brands. And so how, how, how do I, you know, get that to happen? And one of the things that I thought about is like, when I publish this book, it's going to be published under my personal brand, The Ratchet Sage, not necessarily coming out as being published by Ebony L. Green, my name. And so these are the types of things that I think about when I'm trying to assess the impact of my fears on leading my brands. It just really helps me get really curious and gets me into an actionable safe space so that I can actually make decisions decisions and move forward instead of being stuck. Um, another fear that I have in terms of the speaking is like making sure that when I get out there to speak um, and when I'm writing that these things are supporting people and being able to get the, the help and the transformation that I can only give them through authentic distinction. There's only so much that you can get from the book, any book uh, that anyone can write. And there's only so much that you can get from anything that I can give someone um, through a recording or by going live like I am right now. There's only so much you can get from each of these snippets of information, having a conversation and delving into what this means for you is really where the transformative work gets done and um, being mindful that when I'm out here in these streets leading my business brand I and in leveraging my personal brand to endorse my business brand I gotta make sure that people know that there's a space for them to land when they want to do this work with the ratchet sage and get into an actionable safe space in addition I've got to figure out what's how this disruption is stopping me from delivering in and on my brand offers because I'm also leading my offer brands. Um, these are that the offers are actually where the work gets done and where people benefit from the transformative work that I have to offer through uh, my business brand, Authentic Distinction, the company. And so at the end of the day, assessing how fear is affecting all of these brands and my capacity to lead these brands is super important in me being able to leverage curiosity to grow despite these fears. Um, and so when I think about these offer brands, my fear for that is that, well, while I'm focusing on the writing and the speaking and uh, really uplifting and, and, and centering my personal brand and getting my message out there so that people can get into an actionable safe space who may never be able to work with me through authentic distinction. And I think about what is that going to do to my offer brands and um, how do I ensure that I am still delivering for my clients that are still working with me and are still going through the offer brands that I have established. Um, how do I make sure that all of that stays balanced? These are the type of questions that I'm able to ask myself when I'm leveraging curiosity so that I can continue to grow, uh, despite the fact that I have these valid fears because I'm human and just like you, and you will have these fears as well. So I wanted you to have this framework as an entrepreneur. So the third step is for you to counteract the impact to leading your biz. And again, you know, I talked a little bit about this when I was going over the second step because they're so interconnected. When you're talking about your personal brand, you're really trying to figure out how can you counteract the disruption to your endorsement? Because when you mishandle your fear, it will block your capacity to lead your personal brand through this endorsement. And so when I try to counteract the impact to me being able to lead my business, my business needs endorsement, my business needs impact, and my business needs an approach. And when I'm coming at uh, using curiosity to come at this uh, fear uh, of leading my business and endorsing it and, and creating impact and, and in this world and through my industry and through the work that I do in my business, through the approach that I have through each of my offers, these are the things that I think about. It's like, how do I counteract this? And so when it comes to endorsing, it's like, yeah, do my endorsement through the Ratchet Sage so that I can continue to have that 
privacy that Ebony wants, right? Because Ebony is the person. She is not for sale. You cannot get Ebony, okay? But what you can get access to is the Ratchet Sage. And the Ratchet Sage is here to endorse you to get into an actionable safe space. That message is for everyone. And so I want to make sure that I am endorsing through the Ratchet Sage that coaching message and getting everyone into an actionable safe space. But I also want to make sure that I'm creating impact through my business brand. Authentic Distinction is here to help people get into an actionable safe space, whether they're clients, whether they are shareholders, whether they are other uh, stakeholders like supporters or organizations that Authentic Distinction is supporting. We want to make sure that we're having impact as Authentic Distinction in those organizations, in those people's lives. That's super important. So we are making sure we're focused on impact over here at Authentic Distinction, and that allows us to uh, counteract our fear. So when I think about, okay, I'm afraid that uh, the Ratchet Sage is um, going to be, become this huge celebrity and uh, not be driving people to the business so that they can get that work and not have time to do the work with the clients. It's like, the focus is on the impact. It's not about getting on everyone's stage. It's not about being everywhere and being seen everywhere. And it never has been. So it won't be today, right? And it won't be tomorrow. The Ratchet Sage is here to create impact. So we're going to be on stages where we can impact. We're going to have conversations and spaces that need this coaching message. And at the end of the day, the approach is going to be based upon who needs this work and how does it best be delivered to them. See, because the idea is to transform folks. And so we're trying to figure out what that approach needs to be in every single space that I'm going to be in. And I think about this is how to counteract it. The idea is to make sure that everyone is getting the transformation that they deserve through an actionable safe space. First, I got to get out there as the Ratchet Sage and endorse that through my personal brand. Then I have to showcase what that can look like through my business brand. And then I have to give people an opportunity to get access to their own actionable safe space by working with me, the Ratchet Sage at Authentic Distinction, leveraging my offer brands. That's how it all works. And I use curiosity as an entrepreneur just in that way, using that this experience, this um, uh, this example that I'm giving y'all. Um, it is difficult. I'm thinking about how to pivot, right? I'm getting into the season of writing the book and, and getting it published. I'm getting into the season of speaking on, on other people's podcasts and on other folks' stages and uh, developing my first TEDx conference. These are things that I am all like tackling for 2023 and 2024. And it's going to take um, me being really, really clear on how to endorse, how to create that impact and how to approach it to counteract all the, Im the impact that my fears might be having and asking myself these important questions is going to get me there. So at the end of the day, Ratchet Sage says, when it comes to curiosity and work and business, it is all about localizing and clarifying. Then you want to diagnose and assess, and then you'll be able to act and counteract because when you learn from your fears, you localize and clarify. That's what you're doing when you're localizing and clarify. You learn from your fears. When you diagnose and assess, you're getting curious so that you can know. And when you act and counteract, you're activating your knowing. This is super important. Um, when you are in a situation where you're not um, leveraging your curiosity so that you can grow and work in business, um, despite the naturally occurring fears you're going to feel, um, you're going to be in a situation where you're not localizing and clarifying, diagnosing and assessing and acting and counteracting. And that's going to leave you ashy in these streets. And I don't want that for you. So that's why I'm giving y'all these lotions today is for you to have the ability to learn from your fears and get curious so that you can know that's how you're going to be able to activate your knowing and change the fact that I just didn't know. Now I do. So I'm no longer mishandling my fear. I used my curiosity when my fear showed up so that I could learn from my fears, get curious as I was um, learning from my fears so that I could know and therefore I could activate what I now know. That's going to leave you in a clear, confident, and resilient space. That's what I want for you. And those are my bring your ass next steps for y'all. I want you to localize and clarify, diagnose and assess, and act and counteract so that you can deal with your work and your life fears. And if you are a coach, I have a little bit more for you. I don't want you to be out here ashy in these streets. Whether you're a coach or not, you can always book a free consultation with me for an hour and I will help you get into an actionable safe space. But if you are a coach, I really don't want you to be out here 
Ashy in these streets, you can join me in my signature series of training programs that are designed specifically for coaches who want to stand out in this oversaturated industry on their own terms. And if you want to know what I mean by it being oversaturated, let me just play this clip so that you can see this for yourself because I, I don't want y'all out here being Ashy in these streets. But what I really love to see is that this industry starts moving towards coaches actually honoring and having reverence for the fact that coaching is a healing modality. How can you heal somebody on something you haven't healed within yourself? So that's like a crack addict or a heroin addict. If you Oh my goodness. I don't think y'all could just hear everything that I was just saying. But at the end of the day, <laughs> I really want people to get into this course if you are a coach and you're interested in becoming a, a, a coach. Um, for the last two years, I did a live webinar where I was absolutely focused on um, getting people into um an actionable safe space who were interested in becoming a coach, teaching them what the five pillars of authentic coaching power are so that they can start their coaching journey on a powerful, uh, uh, in a powerful space. 
And then there was the four week workshop that I was doing. And uh, from all of that, I just developed an online course that people can get into at the pre-launch price. Um, right now, you can use the link um, below to be able to get into that. There's a button where you can find out more about my Unlock Your Expert Coach Academy. But if you're a coach and you're like, listen, I know I want to be a coach. There's a coach inside of me. You want to be a transformative coach. Trust me. Otherwise, you're not going to make it in this coaching industry. Everybody out here is calling themselves a coach. And there are coaches who have their own following. And then there are coaches who don't. And for you to break into this space, you're going to need to have your thing, your specialty that people can't get from anywhere else but by working with you. So we want to make sure that you um, leverage your coaching specialty. And that is born of your lived experience. You crawled out of a mud and you have the blueprint to get people out of that mud. And I want to help you pull that out of you and build it into a coaching business. And it's the four week workshop where we get you clear on what that coaching specialty is and exactly the steps that you're going to take people through to get them to their transformation. Once you're clear in that, and I'm clear that you are going to help me disrupt this industry by standing next to me as a powerful transformative coach, then I'm going to be looking for forward to uh, and sending you a private invitation to get into the three month intensive um, so that you can develop that whole coaching specialty and to offers a niche target market client avatars that you're going to be working with get you clear in all of your offers your minimum viable offers your forward-facing client offers and your high-end client offers we want to get you really really clear in what is your business framework so that you can launch powerfully but with authentic clarity confidence and resilience in the coaching business that you are about to operate that's what we do in that three-month intensive and i am mining for the best coaches to stand next to me in this coaching industry and that's why it's by private and invitation only and those who invest in themselves by going through the four-week workshop that investment gets carried over into the investment in the three-month intensive so i'm not trying to have you do a second thing so i can get more revenue from you i just really want to see what you got so i'm making sure i'm not giving away my authentic coaching framework to people who uh, really don't deserve to be in this industry so that's what this is about for me really interested and in speaking to anybody who feels like listen that sounds like it's for me i want to get into that authentic um I want to have my own authentic coaching framework and know what my five pillars of authentic coaching power are. You want to join my Unlock Your Expert Coach Academy. And for those of you, again, who are not ready to take action or invest yet, I do invite you to join me in a free consultation so that we can discuss the best next steps for you so that you can get into an actionable, safe space for you and that big vision you've got. I know you got one in you and I don't want you stuck out here in these streets. And I do ask that you follow me on social media and help me beat these algorithms. I am at Authentic Distinction everywhere except for Twitter and YouTube where I am at True Distinction. They are trying to silence Black, Autistic, and Ratchet out here. And I know y'all won't let them. So follow me today and help me beat these algorithms. And if you clip or share anything I've said today, please tag or reference me accordingly for attribution and homage because they're also out here trying to steal ingenious, innovative greatness because they haven't been able to work with the Ratchet Sage yet. Hmm. But that leaves them ashy and stuck. So send them my way so that they can get this authenticity work uh, by paying homage and attribution when, when you come across greatness, whether it's me or anyone else, make sure you're paying attribution. This is the way for us to encourage actionable safe spaces for ourselves and others everywhere we go and those are my bring your ass next steps for y'all after you've heard all of this from me today i know you want to get a better hold on how to stay in an actionable safe space despite the fear in work and business and if you want it for the support after our conversation today i wanted you to know that i am here as a solution with the knowledge strategy resources and tools to keep you in action that is born of your authentic agency i will be live at my usual time of wednesday at 8 p.m in the same places on on the social media streets in the month of February, I'll be talking about clarity and all kinds of aspects of clarity in your life, in your connections, in your work and in your business. So we're going to be talking about that next month. This month was all about how you can manage fears. I did my managing fear series. So next month, we're going to have our clarifying clarity series. And I'm super excited about that. So come learn how you can use clarity, clarity to create and stay in an actionable safe space. Come next week and I'm this and do not forget to bring a friend y'all can come together and learn from the ratchet sage this has been great sharing this with y'all today and i thank y'all for being here or catching the replay y'all know what time it is it's time for me to close out this live stream so let me get into my countdown 
Five, I want you to stay open so that you can explore as you live. And four, I want you to prioritize choice so that you can navigate your life and your world. See, without openness, there is no exploration. Just like without choice, there is no navigation. So I want you to focus on both of those things. Three, I want you to choose acceptance. This is how you're going to be able to empathize and discern and decide what you want to do. I do not mean that you have to accept everything that happens to you. I just want you to accept that it is happening so you can do something about it. And two, I want you to encourage agency so that you can innovate when you're alone and with others. We need innovation in this world. And that means that you need to bring your innovation and allow other people to have an, uh, innovation because that's how we're going to um, get to the space that we need to be as a humankind in a world. And that's going to take agency, your agency and their agency. So bring your agency, allow other folks to bring their agency so that we can all innovate in this world because we need it. And last but not least, I want you to, one, value desire so that you can activate all the things that matter to you. And I mean your desire, not their desire for you, not their desire for them, not their desire for something else. I want you to value your desire for you and the things that matter to you so that you can get to an actionable safe space. That's the only way that it works. And I want you to be able to create an actionable safe space for yourself using my signature method of desire choose act peace love harmony and blessings y'all i'm out i want you to stay authentic and be sure to bring your ass everywhere you go and i thank you for joining me on this live stream peace